Well, I may be going overboard with these gamut comparisons of the ASO CG211, but it did occur to me that uh, people interested in a high-end display like this might also be interested in working in the Adobe RGB color space. So uh, it seemed like that might be an important comparison to do here. This will be the last one for this particular monitor, though. What we're looking at here, this is the Adobe RGB color space in LAB space. Uh, it's a very, this is a very large gamut um, that is uh, used on some professional cameras, much less so on any consumers. It's pretty much only used by people working in a uh, color-managed environment where they need uh, accurate reproduction of uh, cam uh, colors that would be out of gamut that on typical sRGB monitors, but that will show up in prints. So uh, what I've done here is I've selected the Adobe RGB gamut first rather than the gamut of the CG211 because, the, as we'll see, the Adobe RGB is quite a bit larger. I'm going to set that to be the comparison uh, basis here, and then I'll go down and pick up our CG211 uh, gamut. And uh, now, in fact, you can see why I did it in this order. Um, the white wireframe is the Adobe RGB gamut, while the uh, colored um, gamut map in inside is the gamut of the CG211. And as we can see here, there's just a lot more space in the Adobe uh, RGB color space than the CG211 ever gets to. So uh, unfortunately, even though this is a very high-end uh, monitor for sRGB work, it, it's really not going to get to uh, the parts of the uh, gamut of the color space that um, are, are particular to Adobe RGB. For that, you'd need um, a considerably more expensive monitor from uh, ASO, uh, and we uh, hope at some point to be reviewing that. Uh, as we'll see later, too, in uh, another review, the uh, NEC LCD 2690 WUXI display actually gets pretty close to this. But um, So unfortunately for the uh, fans of the CG211 here, uh, if you're working in Adobe RGB, it's, it's not going to be the best choice for you.